like to ask everyone, if you will, to please turn in your Bibles to the book of Luke. I'd like to read from Luke chapter 21. Luke chapter 21, beginning with verse 10, reading through verse 19. Jesus is here speaking to the Jews about the fact that God was about to destroy Jerusalem. And as he began to send the armies to destroy Jerusalem, and as the enemies began to take over Jerusalem, Jesus was telling them that they needed to continue to trust in the Lord. Their confidence needed to be in God, not in men. They needed to be praying fervently for God to help them in all of the persecution and the trial and the tribulations that they were going to go through. Matthew 24 tells us that the destruction of Jerusalem was the worst thing that had ever happened. It was a seven year siege and a long period of hell that the people went through. The Bible says in Matthew 24 that that was the worst thing that had ever happened up until that time and it was the worst thing that ever would happen. Uh, Flavius Josephus, one of the historians uh, from that era, tells us that when the city of Jerusalem had been destroyed and they went into the city after <laughs> Jerusalem had been destroyed, they'd been through a famine, they'd been through pestilence, they'd been through battles, they'd been through all kinds of trouble. And jo Josephus tells us that when they went into the city after the siege of Jerusalem, that the people uh, had been eating their own children. That's how horrible the destruction of Jerusalem was. I don't think that in America that we know what very serious problems are really all about. We look at tel on television sometimes at other countries where children are starving and where there's great travesty and a lot of suffering going on, but I don't think that we can comprehend how bad things are in other countries. And I think that we need to be prepared for very difficult times that are coming to America. So as I read this passage where Jesus was speaking to the Jews about the destruction of Jerusalem, I hope that God will help us to hear these words as words to us in preparation for the difficult times that we're going to be facing. Luke 21, beginning with verse 10, the word of God says, Then said he unto them, Nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. And great earthquakes shall be in divers places, and famines, and pestilences, and fearful sights, and great signs shall there be from heaven. But before all these things they shall lay their hands on you and persecute you, <coughs> delivering you up to the synagogues and into prisons, being brought before kings and rulers for my name's sake. In other words, Christians were going to be suffering in a very horrible way. That's coming to America. Verse 13 says, And it shall turn to you for a testimony. Settle it therefore in your hearts not to meditate before what ye shall answer. For I will give you a mouth and wisdom which all your adversaries shall not be able to, able to gainsay nor resist. And ye shall be betrayed both by parents and brethren and kinfolks and friends and some of you shall they cause to be put to death. And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. But there shall not an hair of your head perish. In your patience possess ye your souls. I want us to think about the last verse that I read, verse 19, where Jesus says, In your patience... Possess ye your souls. I believe that the word patience is used in a wrong way often by Christians today. I have pastors often that will 
say, well, we're going to be patient about this and that, talking about ungodliness in the church. We're going to be patient about that. And then we hear about false doctrines. We have had uh, among primitive Baptists, we've had a lot of false doctrines that have entered in the past 30 or 40 years. And every time another false doctrine begins to be introduced, I always hear preachers say, well, we're going to be patient about that. And now, primitive Baptists as a denomination have no idea what the truth is. Because there's such a conglomerate of things that are being taught. There's no established truth. And therefore, there is no unity and no harmony. I just want us to understand that the word patience, as it's used in the Bible, does not mean that you ignore and overlook ungodliness and false doctrine. You'll see that as we go along. Jesus is going to highly commend some churches and those churches that he highly commends for being full of patience. In fact, he will twice talk about how patient that church was and at the same time, the same passage, he will say now, I'm thankful that you don't tolerate this and you don't tolerate that. People today think that patience means that you just tolerate everything that goes on. And that's contrary to the teaching of God's word. If you study this passage and you think about what Jesus meant when he said to his, his disciples, he says, in your patience possess ye your souls He's telling them that if they will have great confidence in God in the midst of all of this tribulation and famine, if their confidence will be in God, if they will have courage to endure, that's what the word patience means, is courageous endurance. It means that you are depending on God in the midst of all afflictions and tribulations. There are people who are born with afflictions. We had a member of the church here when I moved here 35 years ago, Sister Sarah Nell Eason. She had cerebral palsy. And she often would pray and ask me and the church to pray that God would heal her. But did you know that seldom did she get angry about her problem? She had patience. She depended on God. She was confident in God, confident in God. She had courageous endurance to keep living year after year after year and the problem never be solved. That's what patience is, is when you are depending on God in the midst of all kinds of troubles and problems. And you and I need that patience. We need to learn to depend on God. We need to learn to trust in God. We need to know that God is our only hope. He is the one that we can depend on and he better be the only one we depend on. You better not depend on our government to take care of you. You better not depend on anyone else to take care of you. You better not depend on your retirement plan. You better depend on God. That's what patience is. Is in the midst of difficulties that you're still con confident that God is in control. I wrote down several definitions of patience. First of all, I want to say that patience is not being lazy. It is not indifference and it does not mean apathy or tolerating everything. That is not patience. But here are some definitions. Patience is confidently waiting on God. In the midst of all of your afflictions and troubles and tribulations and persecutions, you're confidently waiting on God. When... Uh, Saints of old have been put in prison for standing up for, for what was right. They needed patience while they were in those prisons. In the uh, New Testament, when the Apostle Paul was put in prison, he proved his patience, that he was confidently waiting on the Lord. 
And so one of the definitions of patience is confidently waiting on God, abiding under God, that is trusting that God is in control and that God is taking care of everything. It is uh, patience. Patience is very similar to being long-suffering. Long-suffering is, is very similar to being patient. That in the midst of all of your suffering, you still are trusting in the Lord. It takes faith. It takes faith to have patience. To trust in the Lord with all of your heart. And not to lean to your own understanding. Brethren, our forefathers, many times, they had no food. I think one of the biggest problems we have today is that we have so much. I have two freezers and a refrigerator. Do, do you understand what I'm saying? We have a pantry full of food. And sometimes when we have so much, we forget how much we need God today. We forget to really pray, God, give us this day our daily bread. But did you know that something could happen and the electricity go out and all of that food is going to spoil pretty quick. Everything can be lost in one day. Even all the canned goods, it can all be gone in one day. And when we have nothing, like the birds, where is the bird's storehouse? Have any of you ever found birds that have stored up a lot of seed somewhere? They don't do that. They get up every morning and they go out and God, the Bible says, God feeds those birds. All these animals that, that are all around, God is feeding those animals. Do you have enough faith to be patient if you are hungry? Do you have enough patience to believe that God's going to take care of you? Patience. Patience is that which enables one to continuously resist pressures of the circumstances. To continuously resist the pressures of the circumstances. No matter how heavy things get, no matter how difficult things are, to continue to resist those things and not let the troubles of life overwhelm you. That takes patience. That takes confidence in God that takes courageous endurance patience will listen carefully patience will help you to bridle your tongue and to restrain your fist and to keep you from running when you want to run it'll keep you from running into a battle and it'll keep you from running away from a battle patience is going to be waiting on the Lord for direction Patience is cheerful and hopeful endurance. When you have patience in God, you're not going to be poor mouthing, you're not going to be bad mouthing, you're not going to be upset in the middle of all those troubles. It is cheerful confidence and hopeful endurance. Now, do you see that patience is a lot more than what we typically think of when we think of erroneously think of patience means putting up with something that's not what patience in the Bible is all about at all. Patience. Now, I want you to turn to uh, turn to Revelation very quickly in your Bibles. In Revelation chapter two, you remember how Jesus would speak to these seven churches of Asia, and the, we'll just look at one of them. Revelation chapter two, verses two and three. I want you to notice what Jesus says to this church. Now, Revelation chapter 2, he's going to tell the church at Ephesus two times he's going to commend them for their patience. They were going through some very difficult times. And yet in all their difficult times, they were trusting in the Lord. They were waiting on the Lord. They were courageously enduring all the problems that they were having. And God was pleased with that. God commends them for the things they were doing right. In Revelation chapter 2 verse 2 he says, I know thy works, Revelation chapter 2 and verse 2, I know thy works and thy labor and thy what? Patience. Thy patience. Now did these have 
what Jesus talked about in uh, Luke 21, 19 when he said, In your patience possess ye your souls. Did these have what, what he was talking about there? Yes, they were possessing their souls. He says, In your patience possess your souls. And in uh, Revelation chapter 2, verse 2, he says, I know thy works and thy labor and thy patience. Now watch. He's not talking about putting up with ungodliness. In the same verse he says, after he says, Thy patience, he says, And how thou canst not bear them which are evil, and, ha and thou hast tried them which say they are apostles and are not, and hast found them liars. Did you know they had a trial that went on there in that church? you know why? Because there was ungodliness and false doctrine. Were they patient and just put up with it? No. What did they do? They had patience to endure all the troubles they were having, but they tried those who said they were apostles and were not. Look at verse 3. And that's born and has patience. See, twice. Twice he talks. He emphasizes how wonderful their patience was. They were confidently and courageously, hopefully enduring all the troubles they had. And in the midst of all of their troubles, they were dealing with the problems they had in the church. Come down to verse 6. He tells about something else they did. Now remember twice he said they were patient. But in verse 6 he says, But this thou hast, that thou hatest the deeds of the Nicolaitans, which I also hate. Now, you see, they were ungodly people. The church hated the deeds of the Nicolaitans. Jesus said, I hate the deeds of the Nicolaitans. Patience does not mean that you ignore or tolerate ungodliness or false doctrines. This church... More than any other church in the Bible, the church at Ephesus is commended for her patience in all of her troubles, and yet she dealt with problems. That's important for us to be able to see the difference in what patience is and what patience is not, because there's a lot of misunderstanding today about patience. Now, go with me to 1 Peter, back up just a couple of pages to 1 Peter, back up to 1 Peter chapter... 2, 1 Peter chapter 2. <clears throat> and if you'll follow along in the Bible here, I've tried to... It, it, sometimes it's difficult for people to find things in the Bible. But if you'll look at the Bible today, I'm going to just go just two or three pages here. Two or three, you'll be able to find it. We're in 1 Peter chapter 2. 1 Peter chapter 2, listen to verses 19 and 20. Peter says, For this is thankworthy if a man for conscience toward God endure grief. Did you know that word endure comes from the same Greek word as patience? Patience. Endure. For this is thankworthy if a man for conscience toward God endure grief, suffering wrongfully. What about the prophets of old that went about preaching did they suffer for their preaching? What about the apostles when they went out preaching? What about Jesus when he went out preaching? What about John the Baptist when he, when he went out preaching? Did they all suffer? Did they suffer for well-doing? Did they suffer for standing up for what was right? You know what it took for them to keep on going? It took what? Patience. It took courageous endurance. Now verse 20 he says, For what glory is it, if when ye be buffeted for your faults, ye shall take it, what? Patiently. But, if when ye do well, and suffer for it, ye take it patiently, this is acceptable with God. God is pleased when you're doing right, and you suffer for well doing. Peter addresses that in the next chapter. He says, It is better... If the will of God be so, that ye suffer for well-doing than for evil-doing. Did you know that as society gets worse and worse, people are not going to understand what's right and what's wrong, or what's good or what's evil. In fact, they're already calling good evil, and they're calling evil good. That's happening abundantly in America today. So as Christians begin to continue to try to do what's right and stand for what's right, they're going to be persecuted and they're going to be hated and you cannot endure 
your soul is going to give up. Here's the way Jesus expresses it in Matthew 24. He says, the love of many shall wax cold. Do you know why their love waxed cold? Because iniquity was abounding. The love of many waxed cold. Why would, that make their, why would that make their love wax cold? Because when iniquity begins to abound and evil is stronger and there are more evil and more wickedness than there is good, you're going to find many people that once stood for what was right. They're not going to stand there anymore. They're going to abandon the ship. You know what it takes to keep standing in the midst of all opposition? It takes patience. It takes courageous endurance. It takes confidence in God. That's what we need is patience. In your patience, possess ye your souls. If you don't have patience, your soul is going to perish. Everybody hear what I just said? If you don't have patience, your soul is going to perish. What do you possess? Name some things you possess. Name anything you possess. Brother David, name something you possess. Car. Possess a car. What else do you possess? Brother Richard, what do you possess? A home. We, have, we possess a lot of things, don't we? A car, a home. We have all these things we possess. I hear people almost every week say, guess what I got? Guess what I got? Guess what I got? Something else they possess. Well, I need to realize more important than all these things that I possess. That what I need to realize is if I don't possess patience, if I don't have this that we're looking at, my soul's going to perish. Because it is in your patience that you possess your soul. Now, it's God who preserves you, body, soul, and spirit for the eternal heaven. Listen carefully. It's important that you understand the difference. It's God that possesses you. You belong to God. You are preserved in Christ Jesus for the eternal heaven by the power of God. But you possess your soul while you live here in this world. And you can save your soul... And you can save the soul of your brethren when they err from the truth. We need to try to save one another. Save their what? Soul. Brethren, if any of you do err from the truth and one convert him, let him know that he which converteth the sinner from the error of his way shall save a what? Save a soul from death. Can you save your soul? Absolutely. I'm not talking about eternal salvation. I'm talking about saving your soul. It's in your patience that you save your soul. You won't be able to go through all that we're fixing to face. You will not be able to face what we're going to face if you don't have confidence in God. You've got to have this patience. Back up two pages. James chapter 5. James chapter 5, listen, beginning in verse 7. James 5, beginning in verse 7, the Word of God says, Be patient, therefore. <laughs> what am I trying to exhort you to do? I'm trying to get you to first of all understand that Jesus said it's in your patience that you possess your soul. The only way you're going to make it is if you have this patience that I'm talking about, that God's Word is talking about. And I want you to know that, that God's telling you, be patient. <coughs> Tolerate sin? No, that's not at all what He's talking about. Be patient, therefore, brethren, unto the coming of the Lord. What was Jesus talking about over there in Luke 21 and in Matthew 24? He's talking about the coming of the Lord. He's talking about when Jesus was going to come and carry out judgment. And he says before he comes and carries out judgment, there's going to be all kinds of suffering going on. And you have to have confidence in God to endure all that suffering and all that affliction. So in James 5 verse 7 he says, Be patient therefore, brethren, unto the coming of the Lord. He's not talking about the final coming here any more than, than he was in Matthew 24 or Luke 21. Be patient therefore, brethren, unto the coming of the Lord. Behold, the husbandman waiteth for the precious fruit of the earth and hath long patience. Anybody here planted a, a garden so far this year? Anybody here planted anything? Uh, potatoes, aren't potatoes? 
Oh, uh, Ken, you want to get on the ball. I got them bought. You got them bought? And they're growing in your sack, aren't they? <laughs> well, you need to get them in the ground. You call your preacher and see if he won't pray for you to get them in the ground. People are going to be planting before long. Everybody understand that? And when you plant those seeds, you plant those potato eyes, you plant whatever you're planting right now, guess what you have to have? Patience. Patience. And he's using a natural illustration here to help you understand. What are you waiting on? You're waiting on that fruit that's going to come forth. And he says that the husbandman waiteth for the precious fruit of the earth and hath long patience for it until he receives the early and latter rain. Be ye also patient. Establish your hearts for the coming of the Lord draweth nigh. Listen to verse 10. Take, my brethren, the prophets who have spoken in the name of the Lord for an example of suffering affliction and of patience. You see what patience connected with here? Suffering affliction. What was Jesus talking about in Luke 21? Suffering affliction and persecution. What do you have to have to be able to endure that? You have to have patience. What's it take in order to have patience? It takes faith in God. Confidence in God. He says look at the prophets as an example of suffering, affliction, and of patience. Verse 11. Behold, we count them happy which endure. What does that word endure come from? The same Greek word as patience. We count them happy which endure or which have patience. Ye have heard of the patience of Job. What did Job go through? Affliction, trouble, trials, tribulations. What was it that stands out about Job? <laughs> he kept waiting on the Lord. He kept waiting on the Lord. And things got worse. You know, the first servant that came and said, Job, you've just lost. Fill in the blank. You've just lost all this. And, and somebody might have said, well, Job, it can't get worse than this. Oh, yeah. Next servant came along and said, you just lost all this. Well, it can't get worse. Yeah, it can get worse than that. And it kept on happening. He'd lost all of his possessions. And then all ten of his children died. Boom. One day he lost everything. And Job fell down and worshipped God and said, The Lord gave and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. You know what he had when he said that? He had patience. Courageous endurance. Confidence in God. And then in the end of the book of Job, after his friends have accused him falsely and said all kinds of things against him, in the end of the book of Job, God comes to Job and says, Now pray for those friends. And when he prayed for his friends, then God gave him twice as much as he had before. You know what he had? Patient. He had patience. He had courageous endurance and courage. He had faith in God. Back up two pages. James chapter 1 verse 2. James 1 verse 2. The word of God says... Look carefully now at James 1 verses 2 through 4. He says, My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into divers temptations. Knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. What comes when you have a trial of your faith? What does it produce? If you're doing right, if you're trusting in the Lord, the trying of your faith brings about patience. But let patience have her perfect work that ye may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. Back up one page. Hebrews chapter 12. Hebrews chapter 12. Listen beginning in verse 1. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. Let it, you know what that whole cloud of witnesses in, in uh, Hebrews 11, chapter 11, that great beautiful picture the book on people that walk by faith Abraham Abraham by faith Abraham by faith Noah by faith Enoch by faith Sarah all those in Hebrews 11 they all did something by faith they had what they had patience they waited on the Lord some of them had to wait a long time but the Lord did come 
And then Hebrews 12, he says, Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us, and let us run the race that is set before us. What did I leave out? With patience. Let us run with patience. Why? Because you won't keep running if you don't have patience. You'll give up. You'll fall by the wayside. You'll lose your soul if you don't have patience. In your, listen carefully, what was the text? In Luke 21, 19, what was the text? In your patience possess ye your souls. Run this race. But understand, you can't run this race without God's help. Doesn't matter what you face in your life. Doesn't matter whether it's physical sickness, financial problems, family trouble, church trouble, or national problems. It doesn't matter what it is we're talking about. We need patience. He tells us how to do it in verse 2. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured, he endured the cross. What are we talking about to have patience? What are you going through when you need patience? Suffering. He endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down on the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him that endured, what's the word endure come from? Same as patience. For consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest he be wearied and faint in your minds. You know what will happen when you get weary and faint in your minds? If you don't have patience, if you don't consider Christ, you know what will happen to you? You will lose your soul. You will fall by the wayside. You will perish if you don't have patience. Back up two pages. Or one page. Hebrews chapter 10. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 36. The word of God says in Hebrews 10 36. For ye have need of patience. That after ye have done the will of God. Ye might receive the promise. Now you do the will of God. Why do you need patience. When you're doing the will of God. Before you receive the promise. See you don't do the will of God. And get a promise right then. You don't do the will of God and immediately get a blessing always, usually. You do the will of God and what comes when you do the will of God? What came to Jesus? He said, I came down from heaven not to do mine own will, but the will of him that sent me. And he came down to do his Father's will. And he did the Father's will. And what came in his life when he did the Father's will? Suffering, persecution, trouble came in his life. What did he need then? What did he have then? Patience. And what then came? He was lifted up to be seated at the right hand of the throne of God. You have need of patience. I have need of patience. I have need of patience that after I have done the will of God, I might receive the promise. The promise comes down the road after you have done the will of God and you've experienced and endured the suffering. One more scripture from Hebrews chapter 6. Hebrews chapter 6 beginning in verse 10. Well I'll just read for the sake of time. I'll read two verses here. I encourage you to go home and read Hebrews 6, 10 through 15. But I want to read you verse 12. That ye be not slothful but followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promises. Brethren the word of God is full of all kinds of promises. There are some unconditional promises in God's word. You don't endure to get those promises. But there are some promises that are conditional. And you have to endure with patience in order to receive those promises. And that's what he's talking about in Hebrews 6 verse 12. He says that you be not slothful but followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promises come down to verse 15. And so after talking about Abraham here. In verse 15 he says. And so after he that is Abraham. Had patiently endured. He obtained the promise. Amen. Brethren I wish we had all day. Because I'd love to preach all day long. About the importance of patience. But if you haven't gotten it yet. You're not going to get it by 3 o'clock this afternoon. If I don't understand. 
If you don't understand still what patience is, please call me and let's sit down and go over it because it's very important. It's a matter of life and death that you have this patience. It's a matter of life and death that you have this patience. Your soul, the future of your soul in this world depends on whether or not you have this patience. In your patience, possess ye your souls. May God help us is my prayer for Christ's sake. Amen.